Mega Mechatronics. Let's take a theoretical look at why changing your intake tube by adding a cold air intake or a hot air intake is going to affect your ECU calibration. So, like I said, we're going to look at the basic theory, and then I'll kind of show you some examples from my specific application, which could be different for different vehicles and different manufacturers of these aftermarket intake systems. So over here we have our OEM system depicted. Uh, we have an inside dimension of 60, inside diameter of 66 millimeters, and here's uh, the, the cross-sectional area there, pi r squared. Uh, the ZZP, as you purchase it, they actually put a little plastic insert in there to reduce the effective cross-sectional area, and that's about 64 millimeters. And then I removed that plastic spacer, uh, so I opened it up to about 78 millimeters uh, effective area. And another thing you'll notice is a laminar element, so like a grid pattern on the OEM. And then what I did was I took some of this from eBay, this, this honeycomb, um, uh, uh, honeycomb pattern here. This is an aluminum, pretty thin wall, I believe a quarter inch spacing. And this is what I used. You can see I cut out a little circle there. And... Um, like I said, you can purchase this off of eBay, maybe Amazon, or something like that. And I install that in there. So this, there's a distance between the grid and the mass airflow sensor, so I try to match that up uh, with the modified version here. So what a laminar element is going to do is that's going to promote laminar airflow. Laminar is going to be straight airflow, as opposed to turbulent airflow, the, where the air is swirling and not, not flowing in a straight. So uh that that's flow uh, typical with all types of fluids in this case the fluid is air because we're floating in a fluid right now um, so what we want to look at is the change in air velocity across the mass airflow sensor so we're going to use uh, some science over here our volumetric flow rate equals the area times the velocity um, so we're going to uh, standardize the flow rate so across these different um, configurations. We're going to say the engine is demanding the same exact amount of airflow at that uh, current condition. And then our area is known. What we don't know is velocity. So a little Ohm's Law trick for you new guys. Uh, you can draw that in a triangle pattern. Uh, so the A times V is on the bottom. So we cover up velocity. So it's Q over A. If we wanted to find Q, it would be A times V. Uh, or if we wanted to find the area, it would be Q divided by the velocity. Um, or if you do some basic algebra, uh, you'll come up with Q over A. Um, so let's, we know A, these are A right here, the areas, meters uh, squared. Uh, so cube is in cubic meters per second. So that's a volumetric flow rate. All we have is a mass air flow rate, so mass instead of volume. Um, so we're driving at about 40 miles per hour with the cruise. Uh, with the GM sensor, we're at about uh, 2200 hertz, which is approximately 62 pounds of air per hour. So we can see that's a mass where pounds on Earth, we just call that a mass, so the um, well, let's convert that to kilograms. So 62 pounds is approximately 28.1 kilograms. We'll bring down our hour. So now you can see that that's a, instead of a volume, so cubic meter, cubic foot per second, stuff like that. So we have a, a mass per hour. So that's a mass air flow rate. So we can convert this to a volume, but we have to use an assumption of air density. And we're going to assume the air is not being compressed. So a uh, standard we can use is 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's something you can Google, a standard air density. So we can take that standard air density, divide that by our mass air flow rate, and that will give us a volumetric flow rate of approximately... 22.9 um, kill, uh, let's see here, yeah, 
cubic meters per hour, and we need to get that per second. So we'll divide that by 3,600 seconds per hour, and that will give us our volumetric flow rate of cubic meters per second. So we changed the hour into the second there. So now we have our Q, so that equals Q. And the next thing we'll do is we'll plug it in this formula and find our velocities. So with, with our example here, using some assumptions, uh, the OEM velocity is going to be 467 meters per second. Uh, this one's 335 meters per second. And then we're down here at 496. So you can see by increasing the inside diameter, we slowed it down and by, we decreased it by about two millimeters. And this is theoretical. It in actually increased the velocity by, uh, let's see, let's look at some percentages here. So here we slowed this down by 28.3%. And here we sped it up by 62.2%. So now you can kind of get an idea of why the mass airflow sensor calibration is going to change because the mass airflow sensor, the physical size is the same. So if we slow down the air velocity per unit area, there's less air molecules there to pull heat off of that, the hot wire heating element. So we got our, we got our little hot wire element and we're going to heat that up and that's going to heat up the air molecules around it and let's say our airflow is is flowing across it in this example here where we slow down we got our air molecules coming in they're transferring heat, they're bumping into the hot air molecules, and then those hot air molecules are being pulled off, making some room for uh, some more cold molecules. So, so we're cooling this wire down by, by forced convection. And if we increase the velocity by going to the OEM or putting that spacer in, we have a heck of a lot more air molecules flowing past that that wire per unit area. So we got way more air molecules and way more uh, heat transfers going on. So we're going to be cooling this down significantly more by having a, a higher velocity. So what I'm trying to show here is um, with this style we could have, we could be introducing turbulent air, which could affect at certain engine airflow demands. It, there, we could create some turbulence just from the dynamics of the air filter system and things like that. So that could create some offset. And then here, where I try to improve the consistency of the airflow by, by inserting the element, I increase the diameter and cause the, the, uh, velocity to drop, which is going to affect how well we're going to cool the hot wire in the sensor. So this, in this situation, theoretically, it should cause a lean condition and the computer should be trying to add more fuel. So we'll go into a positive long-term fuel trim and we'll take a look at an example of that with my vehicle, with my specific application. Um, I'm not trying to say this, this holds true for every vehicle. Um, well, I think it does hold true for every vehicle, but uh, how much of a difference, 6.2% negligible, uh, this would actually probably maybe uh, in most conditions uh, enrich in your long-term fuel trims, which isn't 
as bad as leaning out your long-term fuel trims. Um, so yeah, let's take a look. First we're going to look at a log of the stock tune and we can see here's mass airflow uh, versus long-term fuel trims and down low uh, the 1950 is around idle so just off idle looks like we're a little lean uh, here's some counts of all the data points uh, for that log um, but just so this is just from the factory slightly lean and then uh, above a little higher under some power uh, light load and, and probably faster cruise we're closer to zero but a variable that I introduced was changing out the injectors to 42 pounds so uh, sort of changed all the fueling um, so we should probably start with this as a baseline so I'm back in here's the editor and I'm doing a compare so it looks like I uh, added uh, and, and subtracted some fuel here um, so playing with the the compare function but if we go back to the scanner log you'll see uh, we are you know between five and ten on the long-term fuel trims across the board here closer to zero at that 1950 and now we're looking at the ZZP install so this is with the ZZP spacer and you can see we are extremely lean around idle and a little bit off idle but you will notice that spacer does help out at the higher RPM um, lighter loads and stuff and moving on now we're looking at the spacer removed in the honeycomb laminar element inserted and you can see we are more consistently lean across the board and in theory we did expect that we should be lean uh, especially across the board and finally here is the ZZP intake with the spacer removed and the laminar element installed and this is after I recalibrated much of the uh, uh, mass airflow frequencies here so you can see I had to add uh, a bunch of fuel to compensate for that lean condition and bring our long-term fuel trims down so in, in a scenario like this where I modified it it's going to be essential that you recalibrate it uh, so a reference of so 428 pounds there and we had to add over 100 about 130 pounds there to compensate I was going to put this in the uh, case study for part 8 tuning 101 but it got a little bit long winded so I'll just reference it here and thanks again for watching uh, please comment if you like these types of videos I, I could definitely do some more uh, like and subscribe thanks again